In this video, I'm going to show you how to properly apply a Pokemon ROM hack patch on all operating systems, so you can play your favorite Pokemon ROM hacks either on your computer or mobile device. In this tutorial, we're focusing specifically on Game Boy Advance Pokemon ROM hacks, but this method can actually be applied very similarly for DS ROM hacks and other games besides Pokemon. To play a Pokemon ROM hack, you're going to need three things. First, an emulator, a program that allows you to play Game Boy Advance ROM files. Second, you're going to need a Pokemon ROM file, which I will not show you how to get in this video. And do not recommend pirating a Pokemon game you do not physically own a copy of. And lastly, you will need a patch file to apply to your ROM, which will modify it into the ROM hack that you want to play. Alright, now that we have all that information, it's time to get started. In this tutorial, I will show you how to patch a ROM on PC, Android, and iOS. We'll start with PC, but if you're on mobile, skip ahead to the following timestamps for Android and iOS. Okay, here we're starting on Windows, but if you're on Mac OS, the process is pretty much the exact same. For this tutorial, I will be applying my Pokemon Emerald Mini ROM hack patch for Pokemon Emerald. So, I got my Pokemon Emerald GBA file here, and I'm downloading the UPS patch for this ROM hack on the Emerald Mini website. My computer recognizes this GBA file because I have MGBA emulator installed, so if you're using another emulator, you might not see this little Game Boy icon. Patches for GBA Pokemon ROM hacks are typically in the UPS or IPS format, so just remember which one you have for later. I always recommend downloading ROM hack patches from the original source made by the creators, because you know it is a trusted download and not modified in any way. Now Pokemon Emerald Mini comes in a compressed zip file, so it needs to be extracted. Some ROM hack patches are directly UPS or IPS files, and in that case you would not need to extract it. I'm using WinRAR to extract this file, but zip files can be extracted without any program on Windows and Mac OS, usually by right clicking them. Now that I have the file extracted, you can see the GBA file and the patch file, and this is all we need for patching. Now instead of downloading a whole nother program for patching, it's much easier to use an online tool called rompatcher.js. So just google rompatcher.js and you'll come across this site made by Mark Robledo, and it's super easy to use. So, you'll choose your .gba ROM that you're gonna patch, and for me, it's Pokemon Emerald. Then, you're gonna choose your patch file. In this case, I have the Emerald Mini UPS patch. Once you add the patch, the site will check if this patch matches the correct ROM base, and will highlight green if the patch is compatible. If it is red, it means your ROM is not the base ROM the patch is made for, or is most likely a modified in some kind of way, not an authentic ROM. Note that an incompatible patch is very common with Pokemon Fire Red version, and that's because most Fire Red ROM hacks usually modify Fire Red 1.0 and not the updated 1.1 version of the game. To know which version of Fire Red you have, start the ROM up in an emulator and you'll see the word presents under the Game Freak logo in the 1.1 version. If you do see the word presents, it is highly likely the Fire Red patch will not be compatible. Now back at the website, we're going to press apply patch, and it will download a whole new .gba file that is a patched version of your ROM. It will always say patched in parentheses, and the file size will most likely be larger than the original GBA ROMs that is 16 megabytes in size. I always think it's a good idea to rename this patched ROM to whatever your ROM hack is called so you don't get confused with the original ROM. Now, if I go ahead and launch it, you'll see I have the Pokemon Emerald Mini ROM hack, and I can play it as normal. Congrats on making it through the tutorial for PC. Alright, now let's patch a ROM on Android. Since Android comes in all kind of modified versions from various manufacturers, know that it may look different depending on your device, but the concept is the same. I'm doing this on a Motorola phone, which is pretty close to stock Android that's found on the Pixel devices, so Samsung and other manufacturers may look slightly different. In my folder app, you can see here I have a Pokemon Emerald GBA ROM downloaded, and for this tutorial, I will be applying the patch for my own ROM hack, Pokemon Emerald Mini. In my internet browser, I'm gonna download the Pokemon Emerald Mini patch from the official site. Patches for GBA Pokemon ROM hacks are typically in the UPS or IPS format. I also always recommend downloading patches from the original source made by the creators because you know it is a trusted download and not modified in any way. Now that I downloaded it, I have a compressed zip file that we need to extract, but many ROM hack patches will let you download the UPS or IPS file directly. To extract it, I'm just going to press it and the files app will put it in its own folder. Now that we have our GBA ROM and patch file, we can now go to an awesome ROM patching website called rompatcher.js. You can find it by simply googling it. 
ROM Patcher JS is made by Mark Robledo and super easy to use. So first, we'll select our ROM file, which in my case is Pokemon Emerald. Then for the patch file, I'm gonna use the Emerald Mini UPS file. Once you add the patch, the site will check if this patch matches the correct ROM base and will highlight green if the patch is compatible. If it is red, it means your ROM is not the base ROM the patch is made for or is most likely a modified in some kind of way, not an authentic ROM. Note that an incompatible patch is very common with Pokemon Fire Red version, and that's because most Fire Red ROM hacks usually modify Fire Red 1.0 and not the updated 1.1 version of the game. To know which version of Fire Red you have, start the ROM up in an emulator and you'll see the word Presents under the Game Freak logo in the 1.1 version. If you do see the word Presents, it is highly likely the Fire Red patch will not be compatible. Okay, now after that we're going to apply patch and it will download a whole new .gba file that is a patched version of your ROM. It will always say patched in parentheses and the size will most likely be larger than the original GBA's ROM size that is normally 16 megabytes. I'm going to rename the patched file so I don't confuse it with the original ROM. Now if this .gba file gets automatically converted to a .txt file, know that it will not work in your emulator. I've noticed this is common on Samsung devices. If this happens to you, when renaming the file, just simply delete the .txt extension at the end and make sure it ends in .gba. It'll even notify you that changing the extension changes the file type, which is what we want to do. And that's it. Load up the patched GBA ROM on an emulator and enjoy playing your favorite Pokemon ROM hacks. Good job on making it through the tutorial for Android. Here we go with the tutorial for iOS. I'm going to open up my files folder, and as you can see here, I already have a ROM downloaded. And in this case, it's Pokemon Emerald. Now this GBA file shows up with a Delta emulator icon, and that's because I already have this emulator downloaded. It's really the only emulator I'd recommend on iOS, and have personally used it quite a lot, so if you're using another emulator, this file icon may look different. For the tutorial, I'm going to use my own Pokemon ROM hack, which is Emerald Mini. GBA ROM hack patches typically come in the UPS or IPS file format. So, I'm gonna go ahead and download this patch from the website. I also always recommend downloading patches from the original source made by the creators because you know it is a trusted download and not modified in any way. Emerald Mini comes in a compressed zip file, so we'll need to extract it, but many downloads give you the IPS or UPS patch directly. To extract it, all we have to do is press it and the files app will put it into a new folder for you. In this new created folder, you can see the UPS file we need to use. Now to patch the ROM, I'm going to use an awesome online website called rompatcher.js. You can find it by simply googling it. You're going to find this website made by Mark Bledo and it's super easy to use. So for our ROM file here, we're going to hit choose file, then select the GBA file, in this case I'm using Emerald, and for the patch file, I'm going to use the Emerald Mini UPS patch. I'll navigate to the downloads folder and then the Emerald mini folder. Since it's highlighted in green, that means the patch is compatible with this ROM. If it is red, it means your ROM is not the base ROM the patch is made for, or is most likely a modified in some kind of way, not an authentic ROM. Note that an incompatible patch is very common with Pokemon Fire Red version, and that's because most Fire Red ROM hacks usually modify Fire Red 1.0 and not the updated 1.1 version of the game. To know which version of Fire Red you have, start the ROM up in an emulator and you'll see the word Presents under the Game Freak logo in the 1.1 version. If you do see the word Presents, it is highly likely the Fire Red patch will not be compatible. Now that I have the file downloaded, you'll see the file name shows patched in parentheses. To avoid confusion, I like to rename the file to the name of the ROM hack. And that's all we gotta do. I'm gonna open Delta Emulator, select the patched ROM, and it works perfectly. Congrats on making it to the end of the iOS tutorial for ROM hack patching. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.